In age 732, Vegeta was born. He was measured at a steady 550 and King Vegeta was proud, but got instantly annoyed at the fact that Broly, the King of Paragus, is stronger. He decided to kick him out instantly to let his son be the only strongest Saiyan on planet Vegeta. Prince Vegeta has shown great potential throughout the years, but was always set apart from the rest of the some reason. He could reheal his sparring partners after a long and grueling battles. He sometimes healed Cybermen so he could mutilate them all over again. King Vegeta thought he just possessed such power that he could restore people's energy so they could fight for longer. He was also a bit calmer, seeing his power and helping out his allies during planet conquers. But he was still a Saiyan through and through. King Vegeta is trying to send him on a mission alone with Nappa to see whether a squad job can be done by just two Saiyans. So he sent them both to a remote planet, where very powerful creatures existed with relatively good technology but extraordinary power. Frieza was concerned a little, letting only two Saiyans take on such an army, but kept his composure and gave him a green light. However, the turn for the worse, or our case better, is when Vegeta's space pod was knocked off course. He was sent onto some random planet, while Nappa was alone on the planet they set off to. Vegeta has found himself stranded in a place no one's gonna be visiting for a long, long time. His character did send the coordinates of Vegeta's though. Vegeta now had to survive on jelly and greens. He was being helpful to the wildlife he found on that planet for his own survival though killing them afterwards so he can feast on their flesh. His pot was broken and he had no way out of there. After a few years, he became a good looking teen and he realized that the atmosphere he was living in is made of sulfur and not oxygen, or well something similar, and that he's been consuming a whole lot of sulfur along with that. So he realized he's been breathing in a whole lot of bullshit which would make an average Saiyan die within the first few minutes of coming there. As his character came online, he saw that no Saiyans responded except two, Raditz and Nappa. Nappa has been looking for him and decided to pick him up. Vegeta waited for a long time but eventually someone came in a pod. We see it's Raditz and he was told to pick him up because Nappa is too big to fit two people in his pod so they had to settle for the ride and take turns hibernating. As they returned, Nappa told Vegeta what happened to their planet. Vegeta immediately suspected Frieza because he would have been saved if it was still there. Jumping straight to the point, he powered off his counter and crushed it and told the two to do the same. Nappa and Raditz do it and then follow Vegeta. Vegeta jumped into a pod of a dead henchman of Frieza's and they departed from there leaving the job half finished and concerning Frieza on whether they left or just went to recover. Raditz was asked about his younger brother Kakarot and Raditz told him of the planet, but not where that planet is so he was clueless about that. So they went to scour. After finding the cords, Vegeta told Raditz to come pick up Kakarot as he is his younger brother and is his family. Raditz agrees and goes there. The events from here go pretty much the same. Raditz yoinks Gohan and both Raditz and Goku die by Piccolo's Makan Kosapo. Goku then trains with King Kai and is then revived, while Vegeta and Nappa are traveling to Earth, going to reason with the unknowing Saiyan. Goku has appeared on the Rendezvous Point point just in time. Vegeta and Nappa haven't killed nobody, so this is good so far. They haven't even planted the Cybermen seeds either. They've just been waiting on Goku to arrive so they can make him go and take down Frieza. Vegeta has approached Goku and Vegeta then spoke to him about joining him. Goku, of course, doesn't trust Vegeta or Nappa, especially Nappa because Nappa is more ruthless than Vegeta in terms of intimidation and fighting. Vegeta wanted to solve it without any fists and cups getting thrown at all. He asked Goku why he killed his own brother and got a not very pleasant answer. Goku explained how Raditz kidnapped his son and how he had to protect his son at all costs. Vegeta, seeing the point, then attempts to apologize for Raditz's behavior and asks Goku to join him one more time, explaining further how the man thereafter was the same man that killed off their entire race. Goku doesn't want to buy it and asks for a real reason. 
Vegeta gets confused, but before he could say anything, Nappa comes rushing towards Goku in an attempt to kill him, but Goku barely used any power and threw Nappa back to Vegeta. Vegeta saw that Goku has potential, considering he did a whole lot of training in one year to combat his old friend, but was curious on how strong he really is. Nappa was told to get out of here as he wants to test Goku, being pissed off at the fact Goku doesn't want to cooperate. As Goku and Vegeta kicked it off with a bang, the fight gets pretty one-sided on Vegeta's end until Goku whips out Kaioken and attacks Vegeta with it, making a dent on our Saiyan Prince. Vegeta got surprised at that power-up, but he managed to pick his ass back up and into battle. Goku was trying to keep up with Vegeta, but Vegeta knew Goku were out of juice at some point, which he was kind of right. Goku was pushed to the edge, and Vegeta was about to finish him off, but instead wanted to test on how Goku kept up being pushed to the rim of the cookie jar. So Vegeta then powered up a Gallic gun right at Goku, not flying up in the air, and fired it. Goku returned a favor with a Kamehameha. Goku was pushed to the point of almost losing by Vegeta, but Goku then pulled a Kaioken times 3 and managed to push Vegeta back. As Vegeta is about to get gulped up by the Kamehameha, he jumped up and saved his own ass, while Goku laid there flat on his back, calling his victory. Just then, Vegeta lands on his feet right next to our tired out Goku. He tells Goku how he was extraordinarily powerful and wanted him to join his team, seeing that he far surpassed both Raditz and Nappa combined. Goku in his almost disembodied state still talks back saying how he doesn't trust Saiyans like them because of what his son had to go through. Vegeta couldn't come up with a way to make Goku believe until he realized he can heal, so he went against the Saiyan pride and healed Goku in an attempt to make Goku believe what he said. Goku was astonished when he sensed all this power coming back and even surging further by Vegeta's hand motion over his head. Vegeta then explains that he ain't no saint either, but if he wanted to kill him, he would have done it already. Goku then came to his senses and started talking about how Saiyans have been nothing but bad news, hoping he's making a right decision. Nappa then comes in rushing on the two who were talking and tells them Frieza is going for the Dragon Balls. Goku got scared at the fact they'll have to fight again, but Vegeta explained on how the Dragon Balls are located on planet Namek originating from there, asking how does he know of them if he got amnesia as a kiddo. Goku explains that Dragon Balls exist on Earth too, saying how he thought that Dragon Balls are an Earth only artifact. Vegeta asks whether the one in charge of them is a big green slug man and Goku laughs and confirms. Vegeta then explains how those are Namekians. Setting that aside, Vegeta says they should go to Namek and they need to do it fast as to prevent any more damage by Frieza, knowing his intentions. Stopping for a bit, Vegeta asks Nappa on how in the hell does he know of it. Nappa says that he may have not destroyed his counter so he can listen to Frieza's, well, whereabouts. Vegeta kind of praised his friend on good thinking but saying how he put them all in danger too. With that, they go back to the topic on how they're gonna reach there with only two paws and squeezing in two people like Raditz did with him. But Goku says how he knows a scientist that can turn a paperclip into a rocket, so they depart there at once. Vegeta's plan to invite Goku into his awesome world of bullshit has succeeded and he's gonna plan on what to do next. Considering Goku is still watching over his shoulder, Vegeta has very little room for error and must proceed with caution. He takes into account the fact that Goku would protect his family and friends no matter what and that he wants nothing but full cooperation with the two Saiyans, if they want to do what they came here for. So Vegeta became accustomed to life on Earth, wearing Earth clothing at times while Boma made him armor, as well as Nappa. Boma actually got a little thing for Vegeta, considering he's pretty prideful and shares many traits similar to hers. She gets Vegeta's attention, but it's not long before they began arguing getting the attention of the entire Z fighter force, surrounding them as they went off. Vegeta and Bulma had no idea what was going around them, so they kept arguing about the armor and how he hates normal clothing as he feels very exposed in it, 
By the time they finished and looked to the side, Yamcha stopped the timer and commented on how the two just surpassed the arguing time record Bulma and him ever had. Vegeta just turned back and continued on arguing, with the entire circle of people just a astonished and confused. As more people join the circle, Vegeta and Bulma are going at it until they both turn around and all huffed and puffed. Yamcha just left, same with Tien and Chaozu, while Goku just led Bulma away and Nappa let Vegeta away to train. Goku heard Bulma say how she never had a connection this close to a random. Nappa heard the same from Vegeta, Bulma then went to work on the ship on the request of Goku. Vegeta came back to apologize, but not without starting yet another pointless argument. At this point, they stopped very early and confessed straight away. Bulma figured that Vegeta has his own special Saiyan thing for her, and they kicked it off, all with Yamcha listening in and walking away with his head down, leaving the premises. Nappa started talking to Miss Breeze and canonically placed Launch, who was telling him about all her raids and robberies, which made Nappa very entertained. The completion of the ship was postponed, but after a long time, it was done, with a gravity machine implemented on the request of Vegeta, since the puny gravity of Earth was too little for him. Nonetheless, they started preparing for the trip to Namek, which meant Goku, Vegeta, Nappa, Krillin, and coincidentally Bulma, as the squad departed. In Bulma's spaceship, many arguments occurred, mostly from Vegeta and Bulma. A okay, actually all from Vegeta and Bulma. But the Saiyans put in work and trained hard, meaning they all got a massive potential boost and a bigger power level than in canon. Krillin also joined in here and there, and Bulma, even though she made a room which doesn't get affected by the machine, still experiences 2 maybe 3 times normal gravity at times because of how violently those Saiyans were training. In about 2 weeks, the Saiyans arrived on Namek and went straight to planning on how everything is gonna unfold. They kept their distance from Frieza and started making arrangements and plans. Vegeta knew that Frieza would be hiding in the Dragon Balls in his ship and they, they can postpone his wish in the long term if they got in there and sold him. Goku said that they can't just use a dragon radar and steal the ones that are remaining. Vegeta likes that idea, seeing that as a low-key way of getting things done, so they get right to it. They had 3 dragon balls to get, so they rushed as fast as they could. After getting the first one, they saw another one move very quickly towards them. As they hit and observed, they see it's Frieza and his closest men, hauling it to safety of the ship. Vegeta figured that it won't take long for Frieza to get the other one, so they rush to the last village that hasn't been hit by Frieza. As they approach, they don't even have time to explain themselves. The Namekians just give them the Dragon Ball and told them to fuck off as fast as they can. They all dip with Vegeta at the back saying how he'll be the decoy for them as he sends Frieza being extremely close. As he stopped, he lowered his power and waited. Frieza stopped as his men continued. Frieza asked Vegeta what is he doing on Namek. Vegeta replied that he's tailing the guys who beat him up, saying how he's after the Dragon Balls to wish for immortality. Frieza replied how he wishes the same and wanted to join back, seeing that he still hasn't changed. Vegeta, seeing that Frieza is still a scum, says that he'd love to be back in, to which Frieza gladly says yes not knowing Vegeta has turned a leaf. Vegeta asks Frieza why didn't he get picked up when his ship got mutilated in a space crash. Frieza told him that his counter's tracker was damaged, probably from landing. Vegeta knew it was bullshit considering he could trace Nap and Raditz back there, so his counter was fine, but he decided to roll with it. Vegeta and Frieza arrived at the ship and asked to guard the Dragon Balls considering he wants the wish too, attempting to well bullshit how those Dragon Balls have to be wishes, which is true but not known yet. Frieza asks Vegeta of it and Vegeta tells him about the Dragon Balls through some sugar on top and lying about some things. Frieza buys it and tells Vegeta to keep hold of those at any cost. Frieza leaves the scout for the remaining two Dragon Balls, leaving Vegeta with the five he has at the ship. Vegeta, knowing that Nappa still has the scouter, which was filtered by Bulma, 
goes and steals the scouter, decoding the scouter to merge onto another signal and contacts Nappa with it, telling him that he is guarding the Dragon Balls for Frieza and that he will toss the balls to him, telling them to get ready to catch. Vegeta then merges the scouter back and sees that Frieza is still clueless about everything. So Vegeta tosses all 5 Dragon Balls and tells the team to get off the planet and to wish Frieza Force off the planet, while he distracts them. As Vegeta says that, he powers up, performing a final atonement in a way that it won't kill him, but it will make him seriously injured. He pulls it off and the entire team in the ship is killed, with Vegeta remaining in there, badly hurt and unconscious. Frieza noticed the power skyrocket to over 600,000 before completely disappearing. Rushing back to the ship to find nothing but ruins with Vegeta and a couple of others badly injured and Dragon Balls gone. Frieza manages to wake up Vegeta to ask him what went wrong. Vegeta soundly lies that the team he was after came back and raided the spot, unlocking more key within himself and powering up, getting more power with him than anything else. Vegeta then snaps, going into a false Super Saiyan Rose. Frieza saw that Vegeta is angry but he didn't see he was angry at him. The final atonement though gone and done it for his mentality and power as he went berserk and went off on Frieza, beating the menace half to death before Frieza went into his final form defeating Vegeta. Frieza then put him in a healing tank that managed to remain unscathed enough, thinking that Vegeta could still be useful. Frieza went to search again. Meanwhile, on the nearest moon, the squad got in their spacesuits and summoned Purunga, with a fellow Namekian being a part of it. Summoning the dragon in the Namekian tongue, they knew they can't wish for death or immortality, so they decided to wish to teleport the entire Frieza force into the deepest part of a nearby sun. That didn't work because Purunga can only affect a small batch of people or a single person. He was then asked to do that for Frieza only, but that also failed because it was considered death because Purunga cannot wish for death. Nappa then got an idea. Seeing that Vegeta always spoke of the Saiyan's ability to become stronger after a near death experience, he wished for Vegeta to get the strongest Zenkai possible. Back to Vegeta, Vegeta was already almost fully healed, with the Zenkai increasing by every minute. All of a sudden, a very high burst of power appeared within Vegeta. Kai High pushing him to double the power, so basically a double Super Zenkai. Vegeta finally healed and got out with a bang, ready to take down Frieza. Frieza sensed that and went to investigate. Vegeta was already there in basically a few seconds. Vegeta then went berserk again just to enter that state again. With a power level of 10 million which was zenkai in full power, and a 10,000 times boost of the false Super Saiyan Rose, we're looking at a power level nearly a hundred billion. Frieza didn't even need the scouter to know the power Vegeta now generated, and for a good reason. The pressure of it is insane, and Frieza knew he fucked up now. Vegeta then regains his composure as his irises appear. He tells Vegeta that he is about to die for the sake of all Saiyans he brutally murdered as well as other members of the universe who probably didn't deserve it either, also saying how he is glad he was knocked off course. With a nice punch through Frieza's call, Vegeta defeated the villain, blasting Frieza away with a spectacular Kallic gun. With that, Vegeta was still not fully in control, so he went to the squad over at the moon that they went to for a wish. He appeared in front of them, and the whole squad was astounded. But not by his power, but by the fact that he legit breathes in the vacuum of space due to the possession of divine key. Vegeta woke up, surrounded by his squad. They all wondered on how he's still alive. Vegeta got up with all of them in spacesuits and him in regular torn Saiyan armor. Vegeta asked why are they so dressed up, saying that they're not in space, they're actually like atmosphere of Namek still. Boma replied that how the truth is, they're not really in the atmosphere. In fact, the atmosphere is 50,000 miles away from Namek. 
Vegeta got confused, starting to argue the fact that he can breathe just as normally as if he's on a planet with an oxygen-rich atmosphere. The squad got confused by Vegeta being the only one that can breathe if the meter is showing pretty much full vacuum, but paid no more attention to it than they already have and they departed home. On their way home, the Saiyans trained more and managed to ruin the gravity machine even more, meaning Bulma had to endure up to 5 to 7 times normal gravity. Also, this is the first time Vegeta and Bulma had any sexual interactions, meaning Vegeta's been getting that booty on the side of training. When they got home, Vegeta and Bulma had a wedding ceremony, with Vegeta having Nappa as his man and Bulma having Chi Chi as her girl for the wedding, which made Goku family to Vegeta in a way. Setting that aside, they had plenty of peace time on Earth, as opposed to Capsule Corp where Vegeta is training vigorously and has been doing that for the past year and a half, as well as taking care of his very very young son Trunks, who is about to turn 1 year old. The piece hasn't really lasted very long as Goku noticed a very familiar key as well as a ship coming Earth's way. He immediately rushed to Capsule Corp warning Vegeta of it. Vegeta was so focused on training that he didn't even realize it but now, he goes along with Goku. Nappa too soon follows. As the three arrive, they already see a skirmish happening between a young kid and King Cole, who is brutally beaten up by the kid. Bulma too soon follows with baby Trunks and sees it all unfold. The kid sees little Trunks, then lets out a breath and then introduces himself as Trunks. He explains all his time travel bullshit and lets the squad take it as a grain of salt. Which they well basically do considering the fact that they never witnessed it, so Trunks attempts to prove it with the medicine, his time machine and all the other bullshit, also saying that he'd be very secretive if his younger self wasn't born yet, explaining the reason behind him sighing when he was himself. They managed to believe it and then Trunks went on to the story about the whole android thing, Jiro and all the other bullshit. Goku takes the medicine, Vegeta and Bulma get a hug, and Nappa gets a nice handshake. Nappa is confused but performs it anyway. Trunks then tells them all his goodbyes as his part is done, telling them he may come back to check in on the situation. Everyone waves their goodbyes as Trunks' time machine disappears into thin air. After 3 years of very intense training, they cautiously wait for the androids to arrive as they wait in the outskirts. Bulma comes over with Kid Trunks in her arms. Goku arrives too with Vegeta and Nappa in tow. Vegeta swears to destroy the androids all by himself and Nappa is just standing there, a little annoyed by Vegeta's constant battle of, oh I'm gonna destroy those androids and you can't stop me, and all the other bullshit, while Goku is slightly panting. Nappa asks what's wrong and Goku just says that he just finished his training so he feels a little tired out. With our squad satisfied, they wait for a sign of something even remotely close to the androids. So all of a sudden, there's a big ass explosion in the city, claiming that's their doing as they go search, only to realize they can't really sense anything. Eventually, Yamcha does find the androids, but is then beaten up badly, pretty much stabbed just like a cannon, leaving him on the ground. Nappa arrives and almost goes nuts, however Vegeta goes blonde turning into a super saiyan as well and now we're in business as Vegeta goes and chases the androids out of town, catching the attention of everyone who then follow. In the outskirts, far away from anything, they have a little talk. As Vegeta attacks and 19 gets in the way, which Vegeta just punches away easily, punching his head off in a single second, he then goes after 20 and starts going at it simply cannot resist killing them, thinking that's all that remains, however Trunks comes in, wondering how those androids are here and not the other two he had in his timeline. Just when Vegeta destroys Jiro, Trunks intervenes saying that these androids could lead them to the real ones. Vegeta gets pissed, asking Trunks on why didn't he just say so. Trunks says that there are two that are in his timeline that would also hit in this one. Trunks then recommends they should find those androids, which are in Dr. Jiro's secret lab, to which Bulma shines a little light on the situation, knowing where it is, so they head there. In the lab, they see three capsules and an incubator. 
The capsules contain the androids while the incubator contains an embryo. Trunks immediately knows this is Cell and destroys it right there. Bulma is getting annoyed on why and Trunks just stares at the wall not saying a thing. Bulma just took it and went on to look at the androids that were sealed away. Seeing them and seeing the complex codes used for them really piqued Bulma's interest as she has a strong desire to turn them back to normal where they are away from any bad influence and are free to do as they please as she recognizes the two Trunks told him about being much like enhanced humans and the other one to be a fully rebuilt version of Jero's son who died. Trunks wanted to destroy them while he still can but Bulma says not to as she can figure out a way to get them back to normal and help them with whatever comes their way. After tinkering with the androids, Bulma releases them all with having no urge programmed in them, no task. They get up and look around and 18 comments, wow, so Jabro is gone? That's a relief. 16, 17 and 18 all introduce themselves and show gratitude. Bulma goes as far as talking them in to stay at Capsule Corp, while Trunks sees just how tables can turn with a smart mom around. At Capsule Corp, Lazuli, or 18, decides to take a job at a corporate, and Lapis, 17, decides he will go in the wilderness, see if he can occupy his mind with something, and 16 develops a strong love for nature and decides to follow Lapis just because Lapis is going to the wilderness. Bulma then goes back to the lab with future Trunks to see if anything remained that they might have missed, leaving baby Trunks with Vegeta who is angry that a warrior doesn't have time for kids. At the lab they search around the premises and after searching and almost giving up, they find a moss time machine which Trunks recognizes almost instantly as well as Bulma. He thinks that someone must have traveled back here, attempting to find a spot with hope written on it, confirming his claims. He knows something is wrong and that a threat is nearing. Actually, it's right up on a mountain as it calls out for him. Trunks trembles as he can hear that voice from anywhere. Cell from another timeline has appeared and is questioning Trunks. Goku also arrives as well as Vegeta and Nappa to see what's going on as they see a green bug man standing on a hill. Goku decides to fight it still gassed out as they initiate a battle. At first, it seems that they're on par with one another, but that's far from being on par because Goku is getting unexpectedly weaker and weaker while Cell goes and mops the floor with Goku. Goku, however, doesn't give up and stands up, grabbing his chest. Trunks witnesses the heart disease firsthand and rushes over to pick him up and take him back to Capsule Corp. With that, Vegeta and Nappa stand up and both Vegeta and Nappa power up into their own Super Saiyan forms and Vegeta goes first, wanting to end him in one punch. However, the Bugman is quite skilled on his own level as he dodges every punch before bursting out a yellow aura, knocking the two away. So then proceeds to pummel both Saiyans to the ground, leaving them completely dumbfound. Vegeta and Nappa are found in a pickle as the two don't know what else to do with Cell. Cell then begins talking, saying how this magic trick will make them stand in shock of how good it is. His aura changes from normal Super Saiyan aura to Rose aura, shocking Vegeta and even more so Nappa. This made Cell all much more intimidating and powerful since he's using divine energy to combat another divine key user as his normal pal. Cell then continued on to mop the floor with them before getting back to his senses and asking for the androids. Trunks doesn't let Cell near them. They go back to Capsule Corp after Cell left to search and tells Bulma to hide the androids somewhere. 18 says she will take care of herself getting out and dipping out of there almost immediately getting excused from work as well and Bulma then contacts 16 through a radio saying he needs a new objective and that is to protect and hide 17 and 18 as well as himself. He gets the intel and gets straight to it, while Cell is visiting many places and just sucking the life out of people. Vegeta, once he made sure the androids are safe, begins to wonder on how did he know that Cell is planning to kill them for his own power up. He pays little attention to it and decides that they should all train. Nappa and Trunks agree. They go visit Goku who is fighting for himself, sweating bullets and holding on the best he can from the heart virus. 
Piccolo visits, seeing them all there, and tells them to go to the lookout with him. Not long after, Krillin arrives too, seeing how him and Piccolo are gonna train in a time chamber just like how Goku did as a child. Vegeta's interest peaked and asked to skip the trivia. Piccolo explains how one year in there is one day here, and Vegeta is stoked about it and takes Nappa and Trunks. Bulma and Yamcha in that meantime go back to the lab to look for clues. What they didn't know is that another Cell embryo was standing in front of them, simply because Cell used the Vine Key. Totally confused, they take it and go do research at Capsule Corp without destroying it. At the lookout, Piccolo decided to train with Nappa, considering they have some things in common, but even though both Trunks and Vegeta wanted to train with Nappa, Vegeta had to train Trunks so he can defeat the androids in his time. So they go in the chamber first. Inside, Vegeta pushes his boundaries into evolution, trains heavily with his son, and teaches his son on how to use creation energy to turn into Rose. Pride fits are also still there. Once they're out, Piccolo and Nappa get in. They mostly train with brute force, but it doesn't take much for Nappa to realize that Piccolo is meditating. So he begins doing so in Super Saiyan in hopes of being able to transform much quicker, but that made him even more powerful as he fully mastered Super Saiyan without even realizing it. Piccolo was surprised to say the least. They get out and Nappa tells Vegeta of his training. Vegeta sees how Nappa is in a Super Saiyan all happy and shit and figures he's a dumbass for not figuring it out sooner. So he grabs Trunks again and goes balls deep into the time chamber. Back inside, Vegeta begins to brute force it all by staying in his Rose form for as long as he can, same with Trunks. They get to the point of mastering the form and then try going further beyond, they get pretty close though. Exiting, they see Goku with Gohan waiting their turn in a chamber. Vegeta says hi to Goku and Trunks breaks down, hugging Gohan. Gohan is confused but nonetheless returns the hug. Back to training, Goku calls for Gohan to go in with him as they do. In the chamber, the events evolve pretty much the same as Vegeta and Trunks, so more or less canon setup. Exiting, they also have a power boost. Piccolo went to fight Cell, who became semi-perfect, however he absorbed 18 first. Piccolo did fuse with Kamido, so he could have passed a lot worse. Having that out of the way, Vegeta then goes to fight Cell. Vegeta arrived to the location and sees that Cell evolved into a higher state, seeing him much, much more powerful. Cell rushed Vegeta and made a dent on him, actually quite a big dent in fact too. Vegeta went down like a damn fly. Vegeta then transforms into Super Saiyan Rose Evolution and then rushes Cell again and they seem to be on par now. Both Cell and Vegeta are at their max, however Vegeta is losing energy fast and is trying to finish it with schemes to throw Cell off. Calming his power like Goku would usually do, he focuses on a battle. He outpaces Cell but Cell has a plan. Seeing 17 down on the ground covered by Goku, Trunks and Gohan which came there to help out, get him out of there so that Vegeta can finish Cell. Cell then performs a Taioken, blinding everyone but 16. 16 just get punched through with hardly any effort, and Cell takes 17 and absorbs it, getting a massive power boost out of it and becoming perfect. Cell then goes to all the present Z fighters and beats them up, one by one, and then dipping out of there. Trunks manages to get out of it, mostly on skates, so he takes Goku, Gohan and his father back to the lookout, telling them all they were beaten by a now much more powerful Cell. Vegeta wakes up and is given a sensu right away while he's conscious. Getting to his senses, he's told to heal the others and he proceeds to do so, getting him back to full power. We then see Bulma flying up to the lookout with a broadcasting device. The squad sees Cell announcing the Cell games, which will take place in 14 days. Vegeta has no other choice but to train, however his time limit in the time chamber has been voided for going in twice already. Goku says they need another guardian of earth to take Kami's place. Piccolo soon arrives too and tells them how they need to go to Namek. He is healed by Vegeta and then Vegeta says that he'll go to Namek on his own, flying off the planet. On Namek, Vegeta is recognized and seen as a savior. Knowing what he's up against, they don't really bicker about the new guardian, 
So they appoint Dende. Vegeta then takes Dende, creates a key pocket and flies back as fast as he can yet again. On Earth, Dende restores the Dragon Balls and quickly adjusts the time chamber to have one more go for all of them. With 12 days remaining, they can train up to 2 years in a single stay. So Trunks and Vegeta make full use of it, seeing that they're only ones that actually can make a dent on Perfect Cell, so once again, they enter. Inside, Trunks works on perfecting the Rosé form and surpassing it, while Vegeta works on the energy control. So both are doing the best they can to make the fight go as smoothly as fast as it can get. After 2 years they exit and see that they're all good with the time having been 2 and a half days, given the fact that then they didn't really equalize the time chamber properly so it's been a little bit longer. Nonetheless, they're ready for sale and they all do the last bit of training they need outside of the chamber. In the remaining time, Goku and Gohan were taught God Key as they weren't really born with creation energy, so they achieved Super Saiyan God in no time. The day of the Cell games has arrived and Vegeta starts walking towards Cell, as Cell smiles and looks at Vegeta, watching his every move. Vegeta tells Cell to do a countdown, so Cell does. On the count of zero mark, Vegeta is right behind Cell in his base form and pokes him on the back of his head, startling Cell. Vegeta isn't prideful, he isn't offensive or anything, he just stands there, smiling and telling Cell that he's heavily outmatched at this point. Cell looks in awe as Vegeta just smiles back happily. Cell tries punching him but Vegeta just uses after image and appears on the pillar of the arena, asking Cell if he got the point. Cell is annoyed, very much so, but keeps his composure. Cell then attacks again in full power, but Vegeta just channels a mystifying aura in his fist, shooting it into Cell's gut, making him spit out both 17 and 18. Krillin goes to help 18 and 16 goes to help 17, even though he is damaged from the previous battle. Cell is now cornered by Trunks, saying that now that he's heavily outmatched, he will defeat him here and in the future. Cell then prepares for the worst as he is blasted until nothing remained. He then flies away. Goku follows him to Capsule Corp, only for him to see that Trunks blasted the Cell embryo to nothing. Trunks then calms down, knowing Cell in his timeline is super weak in comparison to here, so he can stay here until he has to deal with the androids in the future. Skipping forward after the battle, Trunks is saying goodbye to his friends and family, telling Nappa he was the best friend anyone could ask for in the future, thanking Gohan for saving his ass countless times in the future, and thanking Vegeta for existing and being his father. With that, Trunks departs back to the future, where he disposes of every android under the fucking sun. After training for so long and fighting for their life, Cell is finally defeated. Vegeta can finally relax and focus on himself and his family. Goku goes back home to Chi Chi, who surprises him with a pregnancy, so Goten is on the way. Nappa settled in Capsule Corp and trained with Vegeta until he met Tights and they talked. Nappa figured that she's self-contained type of person, something that he lacks, so they started having a liking for each other. But the relationship of theirs was in the same place until Boma told Tights that Nappa likes her and Vegeta telling Nappa the same about Tights. From there, they hit it off. Seven years have passed since the whole thing. Goten is seven and Trunks is eleven, considering the time gaps in Cell Saga. In that meantime, Nappa and Tights have married and have gotten a baby girl of their own, who they named Kale, without even knowing what they're gonna discover in the very near future. The little Kale is three, as well as Marin, who is a daughter of Krillin and Eighteen. There is one more crucial thing that happened in the meantime. Vegeta managed to discover the Kai Kai technique on his own. During his training, he was meditating as told by Nappa, and he was visualizing Namek and used his key to try and observe the planet, but in turn managed to warp there. It took him a while to get back home the same way, but he discovered a teleportation technique nonetheless. Gohan and Videl also hit it off, exactly like in canon, meaning the same squad enters the Tenkaichi Budokai, except Nappa enters instead of Krillin. The day of the tournament arrives and everyone's at Capsule Corp, waiting on Vegeta so he can warp them all there. Once Vegeta was ready to go, he did so. At the tournament grounds, Goku saw many familiar faces, except the young fighters and two weirdly looking guys. 
Vegeta recognized their key and went to speak to them without telling anyone anything, knowing they have the same key composition. Vegeta went up to them and told them to skip the introduction as they most likely know him. Shin introduced himself anyway and told Vegeta they're not here to make friends, but warned them of a threat they need gone. With Vegeta there, they're sure to win instantly, without everyone even knowing. Vegeta accepted and so Shin telepathically told them all, as well as gave him a key signature of Majin Buu, the main target. Vegeta reversed that telepathy and figured off all the tricks Bobbidi, Majin Buu's master, can actually do. Vegeta took the info and simply poofed to Bobbidi's ship and did a number on Bobbidi and his cronies. He then sensed Majin Buu, sealed up in a ball. So he sliced it open and realized that Buu is extremely weak by comparison to him. So he went to see what Buu can do. However, he was very cautious around him, telling him that he is his master. Buu seemed to understand, but just then, Vegeta paralyzed Buu in the same fashion Goku paralyzed Broly in the Broly movie, telling him that the world doesn't need evil, sealing Buu in a burial bubble, compressing the ball, and flying up to the sun and dropping him in there, destroying him from existence. Vegeta then teleported to the tournament and told Shin and Kabito that the job is done. That means two things. Old Kai is never released, and the tournament actually goes normal. Videl does get beaten up though, so the battles all end up with the finals, Goku vs Vegeta. Goku didn't manage to unlock Super Saiyan Blue and is now on par with Vegeta in terms of power, but only when he uses Kaioken due to Vegeta training the absolute hell out of himself in the Cell Saga, so the winner is clear for the tournament. Shin then asks Vegeta if he'd like to train with him, however Vegeta declined the offer due to family reasons. Goku didn't accept either, since he is supposed to earn for his family. Shin then thanked Vegeta for taking down Buu, and Vegeta thanked Shin for telling him, not knowing how powerful Buu would have gotten if it got out of hand like in canon. With it, Vegeta brought home cash of his own, but decided to give it to Goku as he needed it more. Goku then realized that Vegeta actually cares about him, having the same respect for him. It's been a little over 10 months since the Tenkaichi Budokai. Goku actually became a full-fledged farmer and a family man since he quit training as much. Vegeta also stopped training as much and started taking care of his family, meaning Bulma gets pregnant with Bulla a lot sooner than usual. Meanwhile, on Beerus' world, Beerus awoke from his little four-decade nap and seeks to find something from a prophetic dream. After going through the same as in canon, he asked the oracle fish about it. After a bit of motivation, Oracle says the name of the legendary being, God of the Divine. Beerus now remembered and mocked the name, but then thought of it as an actual foe that will control all gods in the universe or even worse the whole cosmos in the future. Beerus then asks for the name for this almighty creature. We says how there is a Saiyan called Vegeta and he was born with an extraordinary abilities only suitable to Supreme Kai's. Beerus was actually impressed and wanted to meet Vegeta yet again. He remembered the name Vegeta from somewhere before realizing that it's King Vegeta from Planet Vegeta, wondering how the Saiyan race managed to prevail. We mentioned how Saiyans are mostly dead and how there's only a couple in this universe remaining, and how it's the prince that inherited divine powers, not a king. Beerus was even more surprised and demanded a meetup with Vegeta, so they head to Earth. On Earth, Bulma's birthday party went down, with everyone there. Goku and his family, as well as Vegeta's obviously, and Nappa's family too, as well as other Z fighters. On the Kaioshin world, Shin senses Beerus moving at high speed, knowing exactly where, so he contacts Vegeta telepathically, saying how Beerus the Destroyer is heading to Earth and to be very careful. Vegeta knew of Beerus and proceeded with caution, knowing Beerus' nitpickiness. Beerus arrived on a ship where Bulma was celebrating acting as a cameo guest, but only our boy Jeets knew who that is and what kind of power he possesses. Beerus was very welcome to the party and he enjoyed Earth's food so much that we had to remind him of his mission. Beerus remembered and then approached Vegeta holding a pudding cup, asking about the God of the Divine. Vegeta was speechless because he had no clue as to what he meant. Elaborating, Beerus makes sure that Vegeta was born with an ability to draw a divine key out of him, 
To which Vegeta confirmed. Beerus then asked about the Divine God again, and Vegeta still has no idea on what Beerus is talking about. So Beerus then asked Vegeta to fight him, to the surprise of Vegeta's. Vegeta was speechless and very nervous, but when Beerus threatened to his family, Vegeta was 100% up for it. So they began the fight. Beerus let Vegeta get a head start to gauge his power, but got disappointed by the base. Vegeta then used Rose, which threw Beerus off guard. Vegeta's strength and speed increased by so many times that Beerus barely kept up with him. Beerus got scuffed up quite a bit from that flurry of punches. Beerus then powered up, using 70% of his power on Vegeta. Vegeta was then surpassed by a long run by none other than Beerus. Vegeta had one more trick up his sleeves, but tried not to use evolution until he knows all his other tricks will fail. He uses his calm like in a fight during Cell games and managed to dodge Beerus' high speed kicks and punches with ease. It wasn't enough for offense though, as Vegeta basically wasn't powerful enough to land a decent punch. During all the calm action, Beerus powered up to 80% in an instant and knocked Vegeta out cold, seemingly almost killing him as he didn't want to destroy the universe net on request of Shin. Vegeta laid there flat on the ground as Beerus started preparing a Hakai Blast. Everyone knew this was the imminent end of them all. As Beerus fired the Hakai and it crept closer and closer, a bright, powerful, big, and pinkish aura got up from the spot where Vegeta laid down. The Hakai stopped moving and disappeared. Moments later, we see Vegeta holding that same Hakai blast and dispersing it into thin air. Beerus was in awe seeing a mortal achieve such a level of power. Once all the smoke and glowing disappeared, we see Vegeta in his Ultra Instinct. Vegeta looked at his hand and then at Beerus, and Vegeta then rushes Beerus with extraordinary speed, hitting him once and instantly locking him out before Vegeta himself just exited out of the form due to exhaustion. Whis grabbed both of them as both were knocked out. With that, Whis set Vegeta on the ground and just picked Beerus up to leave, thanking Bulma for the food. Vegeta has recovered from his injuries not knowing what happened to him after he got knocked out like a pussy. Goku and Nappa told him how he unlocked something that made the angel dude very impressed. Vegeta doesn't remember anything so Goku starts explaining on how Vegeta attained very high response time and an amazing aura to go along with it, seeing how both Beerus and Whis are amazed. Vegeta was confused but said how he did feel weird after he woke up as well as being in a huge pain. Goku said how he was extraordinarily powerful and that he needs to know what that is. A few days passed and Vegeta is at home, training away and trying to find a way to enter this new state again. When he was about to finish his training, Whis showed up to go eat some of the Earth's cuisines. Vegeta interrupted saying how he needs to know that power up he had during the fight with Beerus. Whis explains how that was the technique of self-movement, Ultra Instinct. Vegeta was amazed a self-movement technique existed and then was more amazed at the fact that he got it, asking if he's the only one that can do it. Whis mentions how anyone can enter it with the right training, but he managed to tap into it onto his own. Vegeta then asks Whis to train him to master it, sweating bullets doing so. Whis says why not? telling Vegeta was about the right time anyways. Vegeta gets confused at the about time part as well as Bulma. Whis then says they can leave as soon as he finishes his meal. Vegeta then says he'll wait, flying over to Goku's and saying how he is going to train with Whis and Goku was so up for training with Whis. Vegeta and Goku then fled back to Capsule Corp. Whis was done with his meal and Vegeta asked Whis to train Goku too. Whis then says that you can get him an ultimate dish, he can come too. Vegeta just tells Goku that he read Bulma's mind and that she ain't served him cupped ramen and to go with that. Goku says sure and gets instant ramen ready. Whis takes a sample and enjoys it. Whis then accepts both Saiyans. Vegeta requests two more things before departure though, Nappa and to get Bulma to give birth sooner. Whis obliges with both actually, Bulma gets a Whis treatment and baby Bulla is born and Nappa gets to train with the two Saiyans. Vegeta is very happy for his new daughter, but not the name. Either way, he told Whis he'd like to stay home for a bit to hang out with the newborn of his. 
Whis had no problem with it and went back home on Beerus' planet. Goku was bummed but he respected his decision. Vegeta was very happy for his baby girl and spent as much time as he can, much to Bulma's and Trunks' surprise. On the next Whis visit, Vegeta, Goku and Nappa are ready to head out. Whis then takes them there. Upon arriving on Beerus' world, they get the first impression of it, as well as Goku needing to pee. Beerus was asleep, so they started training and doing chores at the same time. Six months have passed on Beerus' world, and all three Saiyans are making excellent progress on their training, and they all attain extreme control of their respective Super Saiyan God forms. Meanwhile, on Frieza's ship, the Frieza Force decided to revive Frieza to bring terror to the universe once again, but once they do, it turns into a revenge mission for Frieza. Vegeta and Goku sense something wrong, but pay no attention to it. Frieza then decides to train for 6 months. Vegeta then starts working on his Ultra Instinct of his with Whis, just in case things go south very quickly. Whis teaches him the whole trick to Ultra Instinct, and Vegeta manages to perfect it in the meantime. As for Goku and Nappa, Goku manages to awaken Ultra Instinct too, and has gotten accustomed to Kaioken on top of Super Saiyan Blue, and Nappa managed to go even further beyond and entered Super Saiyan Blue Evolution and was the same strength as Goku. Vegeta was just slightly ahead of him. Six months after, Jaku comes over and tells Bulma of Frieza. Gohan decides to help even though he's weak as fuck. Bulma tries the usual ice cream sundae trick, but it doesn't work. However, she remembers the communicator she was given, so she uses that and contacts Whis. Vegeta knew right away that it's trouble. Goku and Nappa were worried, but let it happen since they're all strong as hell now. Vegeta tells Bulma to make someone go Super Saiyan so that he can Kai Kai there with Goku and Nappa. Bulma appoints Gohan and he does it. The trick works. Vegeta straight up tells Gohan that he's gotten so much weaker before turning his attention to Bulma and Jaco, asking how much time they got left. Jaco says 15 minutes, so they work ahead. Vegeta tells Goku that he will fight this time as he already had his chance back on Namek. Goku is glad to battle Frieza. Nappa was kind of bummed this time. Goku was ready to rumble. Frieza arrived and demanded to see Vegeta, but in the end saw Nappa in front of him. Goku gave that luxury to Nappa since he knew Frieza for more than a few days, as well as working with the Force. Nappa went straight to blue, spending no time on Super Ultra Mega Lightning, and he straight up transforms and beats Frieza up a bit. Frieza then stops him, telling him to wait, and he has a new form of his. Nappa waits, and Frieza powers up into his golden form. Nappa just stands there, knowing what to do. Nappa rushes, but Frieza keeps up with it, actually surpassing him greatly. Frieza applauds Nappa on the new power boost, but saying how it's not enough. Nappa then gets the desperation needed to go Super Saiyan Blue Evolution increasing his power greatly and getting Frieza to be his bitch for a while. Frieza eventually starts losing power and energy as he goes back to normal. Nappa enters a normal Super Saiyan God and tells Frieza to never resurrect again, unless he wants to die again. Frieza gets angry and Nappa gets shot by a key beam, but it does nothing. Nappa just deflects it back, then prepares a nice final flash, which he picked up from Vegeta blasting Frieza away from the face of the planet. At last, some peace came in. Whis and Beerus came at the very end of it and congratulated Nappa on defeating Frieza, to which Nappa was very proud of for a while. A few months pass and the Saiyans are in Beerus' world, training. Whis informed Vegeta on the new info about the God of Divine, saying how he might have found a way to make him reach that title, saying how Akai in Universe 10 might have answers to it. But not before long, something crashes on a planet. Beerus explodes and thinks that the three are causing all the ruckus. After a bit, we see it's Champa, the destroyer of Universe 6, with his angel accompanist Vados. They came here to give Beerus a nice cuisine, so they go inside. Beerus tries the eggs, which are normal ass eggs, confirmed by Whis and all three Saiyans. Beerus then spits out that egg and brings up the instant ramen. Cooking it and serving it, Whis tells the opposing duo to eat up. Seeing Vegeta, Nappa, Goku and Beerus enjoying it, they dig in and absolutely love the flavor, texture and pretty much everything else. 
Champa is so eager for this new food that he proposed a tournament for the control of Earth. Beerus sees the three punch happy Saiyans and calls it a deal. Champa is eager to win and eat more ramen, so he leaves back to his world. Goku, Vegeta and Nappa then train up like never before, getting as strong as they possibly can, not wasting a single second in their training. They get as buff as possible. The day approaches, Piccolo and Monaka are appointed too, as they go to the tournament grounds. Over there we see Champa stuffing his face with food, while Vados gives everyone a written exam, which thankfully everyone passed. With that, there is one more thing to do, and that is to begin the tournament. The first to go is Goku and he fights Botamo in the first round. Goku does the same thing he would do in canon and wins the battle. Next up is Goku vs Frost and that also goes the same way. Next up to fight Frost is Nappa. He gets a hold of Frost and is dominating him throughout most of the fight. He does get poisoned though but rushes Frost blindly, catching him by surprise and throwing him out of the ring. Jocko saw that something went on and called Frost out for cheating. They figured out that Frost used a poison needle to tase his opponent in a way. So Frost was eliminated and disqualified. With Frost out of the picture and the two Saiyans now proven to be legit, they are back in the fight. Napper prevails and goes up against Mageta. At first, he doesn't seem to get anywhere with him, seeing that despite his size, he's still as fast and a formidable opponent. Nappa is being pushed into a corner by Mageta, but that's not it as Mageta starts raising the arena's temperature. Nappa was backed even further into a corner, actually literally because he was right about against the barrier and had nowhere to go. Vegeta shouted out to go lower since it's colder down below. While Champa is calling bullshit, Vegeta reminds him that the tournament doesn't have many rules, so advice is the least of his worries. Nappa on the other hand listens to Vegeta and goes down lower and makes his move. He goes and pushes Mageta in the corner of the arena from down low before firing a massive wave at the ground, making the ground from beneath Mageta collapse. Mageta was then eliminated from the tournament. Next up are Nappa and Kaba. They initiate the battle and Vegeta takes a moment to appreciate the fact that Kaba and him basically have the same posture. Back to the fight, Nappa and Kaba are pretty equal in terms of base power, so Nappa decides to take it a step further into a Super Saiyan. Kaba stops and wonders what exactly Nappa is using. Nappa, taken aback by his reaction, responds that it is a Super Saiyan. Nappa realizes that Kaba doesn't even know what a Super Saiyan is, so he decides to bully Kaba into going in it. However, he doesn't take the same approach as Vegeta in canon. Rather, he lightly spars with him, cursing him out and asserting dominance. In the end, it actually works out and Kaba goes Super Saiyan. He manages to deal some damage to Nappa, but Nappa knows he's toast as Nappa just goes Super Saiyan 2 and punches him hard enough to make Kaba collapse. Nappa tells Kaba to remember what triggered the transformation and he then thrown him out of the arena. At this point, Nappa feels pretty confident at first but seeing Hit made his skin crawl as Hit enters the arena. Their battle starts and Nappa feels odd about the whole fight. So he decides to go Super Saiyan Blue and redding up. Hit goes into his stance and waits for Nappa to make his move. Nappa is cautious and doesn't allow his Saiyan instincts to get the better of him, so he just stands there. Hit then decides to start the battle as he immediately uses his time skip to deal a critical hit on Nappa. Nappa manages to get back on his feet, but Hit goes ahead and lands another critical hit, this time knocking Nappa out. Next up is Piccolo and he experiences the same fate. Then Goku and he gets pummeled too, making Nappa go berserk and rush from the outside of the arena, however he's stopped by Whis and Vados for interfering. Vegeta is up next and he might have figured out a trick to his time skip and he manages to predict his attack even in his base. Hit is quite impressed so he goes and takes the fight seriously, managing to take Vegeta down for a few seconds. Vegeta doesn't give up though as he goes Super Saiyan Blue and continues predicting Hit's movements, managing to hold his own against Hit. Hit then starts powering up all of a sudden, 
while Vegeta is wondering what in the actual hell is going on. Hit stops after a while and tries out what he thought is improvement. Hit attacks and Vegeta manages to predict but gets hit anyway. Vegeta notices that Hit has the ability to improve his time skip and tries to end it in one punch by going Super Saiyan Rose Evolution. He succeeds and rushes Hit. He manages to kick Hit but doesn't deal much damage as Hit partially dodges the kick using his time skip, creating an opening for Hit to use and strike Vegeta down yet again. Vegeta falls down but doesn't give up yet as he goes and pushes his power further beyond, going full 100% and continuing his rampage. He manages to keep up with Hit once again, but that's about it. Vegeta then tries putting everything he has into one Gallic gun, firing it at Hit. Hit decides to use his time skip to dodge the wave and then coming up behind Vegeta, punching him square in the head. Vegeta immediately then goes Ultra Instinct and confuses Hit by using After Image. He then creates one going full speed at Hit and Hit falls for it, ending up on the ground the very next second. Hit is trying to breathe but can't. Vegeta then picks him up and softly throw him out of the battle arena knowing Hit has potential and not wanting to kill him. Hit wonders what the actual hell Vegeta is thinking and why didn't Vegeta kill him. Vegeta just replies that his skills are too good to be swept away by his hand, wanting to battle him again someday. With that, Universe 7 won the tournament, but they also won the Super Dragon Balls. Beerus made the wish to create a copy of Earth in Universe 6. It's been a little while after the tournament and everyone is just enjoying their life. Nappa and Goku have some bonding time and Vegeta is just being lazy as ever and just laying on the grass talking about training and such. All of a sudden, a time machine crashes nearly inches from Vegeta as he filled his pants. He noticed that this resembles the time machine Trunks used back when they fought against the androids. Goku went to check in and saw Trunks, much to Vegeta's surprise. Trunks looks out to the window and sees Vegeta, peeking in the machine in utter confusion. Trunks goes ballistic and punches a hole through the glass, landing a blow on Vegeta's nose. Skipping forward, we see Trunks apologizing, saying how he has a very good reason why he did it, and then we see Vegeta pinching his nose to stop the bleeding, being angry in Trunks for hitting him and asking why the hell did he do that. Vegeta's answer has been answered when someone crashes in, wondering how did he get pulled through time. From the rift, out comes a person looking pretty much exactly like Vegeta, and this person just looks onto what's around him. He looks on to see Vegeta, Nappa, Trunks and Future Trunks outside and comments on them being there, finally realizing this is the past timeline. Future Trunks elaborates how this is what they call him is Vegeta Black and he's the reason why he fled back in the past timeline. Goku and Nappa arrive as well in a hurry from their little spar, seeing Future Trunks and then Vegeta Black getting confused as to what's going on. Vegeta explains the whole situation to them and they seem to have understood. Future Trunks then elaborates about how this Vegeta black foe managed to destroy half of the earth and kill almost everyone and everything that existed on that planet. Before Trunks could continue, Black interrupts saying that he came to kill him so he doesn't have to bother with the resistance in the future. Vegeta, satisfied with what he has to hear, goes to fight Black to see where he stands against him. With Vegeta and Black standing face to face against each other as the battle begins and they seem to be on par. But Black is not even budging at any of the punches Vegeta lands on him. Black is taking the easy jumping to Super Saiyan Rose. Vegeta rushed but is then stopped by a Super Saiyan Rose Black as the two continued on. The battle between the two raged on but Black was just toying with him getting these random power-ups and being smug, calling Vegeta a weak bastard that didn't deserve the body he was given. Even though Vegeta was angry, he calmed down, dropping out of Super Saiyan Rose and entering his Ultra Instinct, looking now at Black as Black looked in awe. Vegeta then put his offense out as he rushed with full force. Black had no time to dodge and was punched in the face so hard that he almost made the rift he came in unstable. 
Black then went ahead and put down the time machine in which Trunks arrived and rushed after Goku. Goku at this point went and managed to enter his autonomous Ultra Instinct. As Goku dodged the attack and punched Black in his gut. Trunks then went Rose Evolution and tried attacking Black but to no avail. Goku and Vegeta then stood side by side walking towards as both of them had access to the Ultra Instinct ready to take down Black. Black then started powering up as his power skyrocketed by thousands of times each passing second. But before he could finish, the rift reacted, pulling him and the violent white aura back with him back into the future. With that done, Black was gone. Goku and Vegeta went back to normal and saw the destroyed time machine, getting sad and feeling bad for the crying future Trunks. Nappa told Trunks to stop crying as they cannot start training for shit against that Walmart Vegeta with that attitude. Future Trunks got extremely angry, popping into his Super Saiyan Rose and rushing Nappa at full force. Nappa definitely felt that as he crashed into Capsule Corp. Trunks started screaming how when his mother dies, protecting him, that he'll know the rage of when he saw his mother dying sacrificing herself going off at who everyone thought was Trunks' best friend at that point. Nappa started picking himself back up as he heard every word he was told, as he felt deep pain inside his heart, remembering the Saiyan race. Nappa gets up, wipes the blood off his cheek, and apologizes to Trunks, attempting to hug him, but Trunks brushes him off very quickly and flies away. Vegeta and Goku follow, while Nappa and his daughter just stand there, Soon, Tides 2 joins in on a confusion, asking her husband what just happened. Nappa, just as clueless, has no idea. Goku and Vegeta arrive where Trunks stopped, and Vegeta asks Trunks what was that all about. Trunks replied that it doesn't matter and they should both know very soon. Vegeta says indeed and starts reading Trunks' mind using Divine Vision and sees that Nappa is standing next to Vegeta Black in his timeline. Vegeta gets confused, asking what is Nappa doing alongside Black. Trunks is astonished but does continue on with the story, saying how Nappa joins Black, because Nappa never truly changed his ways and always listened to Vegeta. That's him. So he thinks that Black is still Vegeta, but back in his old days. Vegeta gets pissed, never knowing that Nappa is a fake not even bothering to read his mind either. Trunks tells his father to get rid of him as fast as he can, knowing he's no good, but to read his mind first. Vegeta agrees and all three head back. Vegeta remains friendly, same with Goku, but Trunks is very cautious, while Nappa and Vegeta are talking. Vegeta reads Nappa's mind and he sees that he's still in the old times, when he follows Vegeta wherever. Also seeing that he's only a Super Saiyan because he gathered enough good in him from following Vegeta in his good steps that it cleared him well enough to turn him into a Super Saiyan. Vegeta asks Nappa to have some one-on-one -on -one time out of Capsule Corp. And Nappa agrees, of course, because he's no-brainer for anything else and they manage to get to the outskirts of town. Vegeta then channels his Ultra Instinct to an extent that is not clearly visible and tells Nappa that he hasn't changed one bit. Nappa tells Vegeta that he's following him just like in the old days because he's technically the king now, but the livid prince doesn't care whatsoever, ready to blast him away. Nappa doesn't back out of the fight though, letting his Saiyan instincts blind him as he turns into his evolution and starts attacking Vegeta. Vegeta blocks or dodges every attack pretty much, before punching right through Nappa's head, killing him right there on the very spot. Vegeta says his goodbyes to the dead former friend of his, makes a crater using his key and buries his old friend, knowing that's the least he could do for Nappa's loyalty. Having that done, Vegeta leaves back to Capsule Corp. Getting back, he tells Trunks and Goku that Nappa is now no issue anymore, breaking the same news to Tights and Kale alike. They are furious at first, but Vegeta makes it very simple by sharing his memories by placing his hand on their head, letting them see exactly what kind of a Saiyan Nappa really was, with Trunks to prove it, if they're willing to go to the future. They understand everything now, 
still crying but angry too. Trunks then asks his past mother if she can do anything about the machine and she's already at it, showing Cell's time machine from back when they fought the androids. Trunks starts crying, however, out of joy this time, knowing the hope written on it actually makes sense after all. Bulma is already on to fixing the time machine. Trunks, Goku and Vegeta go head off to train. Once the time machine is repaired, they go and get ready for the journey. Once in the future, they see just how fucked it really is and they go down to the subway where the remaining people of Earth's are. Vegeta gives them all a massive grub and they all eat. Trunks kisses Mai to feed her a sensu and the normal Goku confusion ensues with the all kissing accident. Once outside again, they power up to let the two rogues find them. Black and Nappa are here within seconds and both Vegeta and Goku power up into their respective Ultra Instinct states, rushing the two. Vegeta fights Nappa yet again and sees that he really went above and beyond with training, while Goku survives through Black in base and Rosé forms, having Ultra Instinct and all. Black is easily disposed of and so is Nappa, as both are pretty weak and slow in comparison to Ultra Instinct Goku and Vegeta. However, someone else emerges. Vegeta gets confused seeing Akai there, having a sigh of relief, but out of sheer surprise, he's attacked by that Akai. Vegeta makes quick work with reading Akai's mind and sees he's basically the reason his future self went rogue, as another version of that same Kai took over his body, getting the name Zamasu. Remembering as much as he can, he punches through Zamasu, only to see him regenerate. Vegeta figures that he's immortal, but fights him anyway. Vegeta eventually wears himself down, so Goku steps in and fights the Kai in his Ultra Instinct. However, it all goes down the drain eventually since Goku can't maintain his Ultra Instinct for long. Vegeta remembers the Z-Sword, sensing old Kai within it and is eventually released by him. He asks Trunks for his sword as he needs a bind object. Trunks obliges and gives his father the sword. Vegeta then goes into his Ultra Instinct yet again, sneaking up behind Zamasu and stabbing him and then basically vacuuming him in with his own power as Zamasu is enveloped with a turquoise aura, getting smaller and smaller. Vegeta uses all his remaining power to seal him in a sword and sets the sword's durability to his own. As Vegeta falls down along with the sword on the ground, Trunks goes to pick up the sword but it doesn't even budge because it's extremely heavy and hard. Vegeta and Goku both take a sensu and Vegeta picks up the sword like with no issue basically telling Trunks they're going to Namek to reset Black's damage. Vegeta Kai Kai's to Namek, does the wish and then returns back with an another Namekian and telling Trunks to keep the timeline in check and not to get the new Guardian killed. Trunks obliges and returns the two Saiyans back to the present as he says his final goodbyes returning to his own present. It's been a while since anything interesting happened on Earth apart from Goku getting a Zeno button and setting up a tournament, as well as a short skirmish with Goku and Beerus after that. Zamasu also got destroyed with the help of evidence from Vegeta's memories. As the Shinkan assembled Shin, Beerus and the Z Fighters, he announces the Tournament of Power and its rules. The universe destruction doesn't sit well with our fighters however, so now they have to search for fighters and their sanity to go through with it. So they assemble as follows. Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, Tien, Roshi, Android 17 and 18, Krillin, Piccolo, and Trunks. Trunks, or rather to say Kid Trunks, what he would be in canon, is appointed because he's technically almost adult here, so he can fend for himself and is powerful enough to stop anyone weak enough in his way. With that, the tournament is ready and our fighters are ready to part. However, they're stopped by the Zeno Expo, so they have to choose the Grand Three, those being Goku, Vegeta, and Gohan, for the Expo matches. The Expo is less than an hour away, and they already have a whole crew ready for it. However, Vegeta says to let his son Trunks fight in it. Reason being that he never had to fight for something real, and that it'll be good practice for when the Tournament of Power comes up. Goku agrees and goes to ask Trunks. Trunks is extremely hyped up for it, accepting it without second thought. With Expo ready, they're ready to head out for the test. Being warped there, they see the three felines over there, aka the trio of danger. The trio of ours notice that those wolves don't emit any kind of energy, 
so they are highly on guard. Despite that, they breeze through the whole fight. Trunks is straight up against Lavender and he was taken aback by his weak ass. So he went to do it fast and win, however he gets poisoned. Trunks is then handicapped but much like Gohan in canon, he doesn't hold back whatsoever. In fact he pushes all his power through the pain. He completely dominated Lavender, however it took a massive toll on Trunks' body as he collapsed down. He didn't win as both of them got down. Trunks was then given a sensu and he was healed. Next up are Basil and Vegeta. And Vegeta simply told Basil to go full power. To which Universe 9 responded with the secret fruit. Powering Basil up. Vegeta simply powered up into a Super Saiyan Rose and started playing with Basil. Giving Bergamo an impression that he is going to be trashed next. Vegeta then gets bored, powering up a small Gala gun to which Basil cannot escape getting caught up in a blast and getting eliminated. So it's 1-0 for Universe 7. Last fight was Goku and Bergamo, however Goku used a simple Super Saiyan for him. Bergamo started taunting him by letting Goku punch him. Goku then turned the tables like in canon. At one point Bergamo became so huge the ground began crumbling underneath him. Goku simply used the Super Saiyan Blue and dominated Bergamo with a Kaioken Kamehameha. Bergama was absolutely dominated and Goku won. The fun lasted until Tapo decided to make his first appearance, looking at Goku and challenging him, wanting the strongest fighter there. Goku says that he's not really the strongest, but he can fight, getting into a stance. Once the two got clearance to fight, they began. Goku jumps straight to blue, having some trouble at first, so he jumps back to Kaioken and fights. Goku then powers up a blast and fires it at Tapo. It lands but Tapo still stands. Goku then relaxes and enters Ultra Instinct, letting Tapo go rush. Tapo does exactly that, while Daishinkan is very interested in Goku and even more Vegeta. Goku then begins to dodge Tapo, but Daishinkan stops them both, telling them that it will be a grand show once the tournament comes up. Goku drops out of his Ultra Instinct grabbing his arm and saying that's okay. Tapo says that he will tell his sworn ally Jiren of his power and that once they're trained up, Jiren will defeat him. Goku, instead of getting scared, he gets excited, which confuses Tapo but doesn't mind it at all. Goku is given a sensu bean as he heals up as well. Daishinkan then proceeds to explain the rules, when and where. The rules are simple, no flight, no BS and no returning into the fight. Also, destruction of universe is upon full elimination, supposed to happen in no realm in 40 hours. Everyone understands and exit the expo. Now that the expo, now that the expo match is over, they stick to the normal crew they chose before the expo matches and roll with it, getting all the training they can get. Whis tells Vegeta about this god of divine state and that he needs to access it by getting every Supreme Kai to share their energy with him, much like a spirit bomb. Vegeta says he'll hopefully won't need it, since especially Beerus is now good with all of them, not trying to destroy shit anymore. So Whis says if he needs more power that that is the key. Vegeta then tanks Whis and moves on to the whole fight in a tournament. Shin recommends to fight as a team to have the best chances in winning. Having Goku and Vegeta in clutch will help them. But still, the opponents are gonna be too unpredictable, especially the one that Tapo mentioned. So they have to be on high guard. Vegeta and Goku simply do not care one bit and say they'll take anyone on, no teamwork required. Gohan says that they'll have the team, seeing it as a good idea. However, Trunks is against it and quite disappointed in Gohan saddening Gohan and making Vegeta prideful again. Having said that, they go do the training in a time chamber, getting as beefed as possible. Once everyone beefed up, we have a few upgrades to our tent. Vegeta has actually mastered his Ultra Instinct. Gohan has managed to fuse his Mystic with a few forms, courtesy of Vegeta and the old Kai. Trunks has exceeded his current limit jumping to Super Saiyan 3 and with Vegeta teaching him how to use God Key a bit prior, he has managed to jump into Super Saiyan Blue eventually, to great surprise of Goku and Vegeta. Now they basically have a real substitute for Nappa. 
Piccolo has beefed up as well, as well as Tien and Krillin. Roshi has cured his horniness, and with that, they're ready for the tournament. The day approaches, and the Team Universe 7 is ready to take off to the No Realm. Thanks to no Frieza in this tournament, our team doesn't almost disband in this case. With that said, they're warped to the tournament, and some universes are already there. Saiyans from Universe 6 are there too. Goku and Vegeta go to them, and they introduce themselves. Trunks is sliding into Kale's drawers. Once he figures out that her name is Kale, he flips his shit, screaming it out loud. Goku and Vegeta are then introduced to Universe 6 Kale, and they're amused. They said that they have someone in their universe named Kale as well. Kale is embarrassed with all the attention on her, and so Caulifilla went ahead and pushed them all away. Daishinkan then decided to announce the tournament start, without Jiren being interrupted in this scenario. The tournament starts and Vegeta is there, looking for that Jiren dude. He manages to locate a few extraordinary strong key and begins going to each one of those. He first took on Dispo and he was a pretty good fight, but Vegeta eventually used his evolution and surpassed him big time. Dispo is out, so the next were the Mirror Man and the Sniper. Vegeta has managed to find both of them and told them to go all out as he entered Ultra Instinct, intriguing a Shinkan yet again. Vegeta then went ahead and dodged every snipe of theirs and told them to try to at least graze him. They struggled for a long time until their plan managed to connect and the two managed to hit him. Vegeta, after that, not wasting even a second, he goes to both of them with two separate after images and takes them both down in an instant, sending them to the bleachers. Having that done, Tapo came in front of Vegeta, as Vegeta remained in his Ultra Instinct, telling Tapo to go all out. Tapo senses the heat and goes into his destroyer form right away. Tapo spares no time as he's in front of Vegeta, but all Vegeta does is dodging. Tapo gets infuriated and tells Vegeta to attack back. Vegeta tells him only if he tells him where Jiren is. Tapo spoils the location and with it, Vegeta headbutted him which sent a shockwave throughout the arena. All meanwhile, Ultra Instinct Goku vs Kefla went at it. Tapo was blacked out so Vegeta carried him to the edge while the rest of the pride troopers went at him. Vegeta just used a wind force field to push them all away. Tapo is then pushed to the void in the same fashion to the Pride Troopers. Vegeta then goes to Jiren with no more obstacles in the way. Jiren went ahead and powered up to face Vegeta, while Vegeta is entering his mastered Ultra Instinct. Vegeta tells Jiren that they're not losing, not at this point in time. Trunks finishes his batch of opponents and goes to watch his father go up against Jiren. Jiren replied to Vegeta that he will lose because he was warned as the two rushed to each other. Jiren easily manhandled Vegeta, not even pushing 10% of his power. Vegeta already got used to the Master Ultra Instinct, so he knew he can last a long time, specifically the remaining 21 minutes. Jiren is not exerting any effort in his kicks or punches, so he just starts to block, which angers Vegeta. Vegeta used every trick he had, from waves to techniques. But it was up until when Jiren started only dodging every assault of Vegeta's that Vegeta got scared. Vegeta then tried pushing beyond what he already has, going into a kind of evolution of his mastered Ultra Instinct. Vegeta got a good boost out of it, but Jiren isn't surpassed, not even 15% of his initial full power. Vegeta is starting to get scared, as Goku, Trunks, Gohan, Piccolo and Roshi noticed, seeing Vegeta struggling with fear. So they went to help with all their power. Goku entered his own Ultra Instinct and went into his master state. Trunks used his newly developed Super Saiyan Blue. Gohan used his Mystic Fuse with Super Saiyan 2. And Piccolo used his Rage as a boost. Everyone started battling Jiren and only now he started to struggle until he burst out all his power. Jiren went offensive with Limit Breaker of his. Vegeta was knocked out of his overpower as he went to catch a breather, while everyone is fighting and absolutely dominating Jiren. Vegeta gets extremely worried and thinks of his family, then friends, who changed him, all his good things in life and starts shedding tears. 
Whis notices that Vegeta is emitting the creation key from within him. Next thing we see is Shin saying how he feels weird, starting to glow in a beautiful pink aura, exactly like Vegeta's Evolution Ultra Instinct, then getting up. Everyone stops fighting as they look onto Vegeta in awe. Vegeta then regains his eyes from going to Berserk mode to semi-controllable mode, and Vegeta then tells Jiren that this is not the end, as Vegeta tells every Kai that they know what he's becoming, and that he needs their energy. The Kais cannot go against his word, as they know who that is, and they start pulling up their energy into Vegeta. He began glowing like crazy in a pink aura. Vegeta then yells as he grows hair in the silhouette of his. He exits the aura and is seen sporting long hair and a sparkling pink aura. Jiren then readies himself as Vegeta tells everyone to move. The Saiyans move out of the way as they see the Kai's bowing down. Vegeta then rushes at Jiren with his new plot armor. Jiren and Vegeta are almost equal at this point. Jiren is getting the upper hand against the adapting Vegeta. As Jiren punches Vegeta and Vegeta spins around, he grows a phantom Saiyan tail. Vegeta looks at it before it disappears, then regrows it as it can aid him. Using the phantom tail, Vegeta gets that slight boost from the tail, but still needs to adapt to this new form of his. Eventually, Vegeta catches up and is surpassing Jiren at this point. Jiren is fuming as Vegeta is holding him by the neck with his now extended phantom tail and punching him down until Jiren starts spinning out blood. Vegeta starts getting dizzy and tells Goku to go and finish Jiren, fainting out of that new form of his and falling into the void, getting eliminated. Goku, sensing Vegeta barely clinging to life in the bleachers, he goes and does exactly what Vegeta said, going into his Ultra Instinct and bringing Jiren into the void with him. Jiren proved difficult, but with the help of from Trunks, Jiren is out. With that, Vegeta is healed and on the bleachers. Kai's all bow down right in front of Vegeta, but instead of Vegeta getting a pride boost, he goes and rushes to the arena upon the end of the tournament and tells Daishinkan to spare the universes. Daishinkan said all of them are gone, so Vegeta, knowing that Super Dragon Balls are a prize in the tournament, then asks Daishinkan to restore all of the universes. Daishinkan agrees, and the tournament is concluded. In the Null Realm, Daishinkan told Vegeta that they'll have to consultate very important matter to which Vegeta is kind of shitting his pants for, but agrees to it. They then return to their universe to chill out. A few days later, Vegeta is just chilling at Capsule Corp, hanging out with his family and enjoying his time of life, when he just poofs out of nowhere, confusing Trunks and Bulma, also making Bulma cry. Vegeta is then warped to an unknown place and is confused as to what's going on. Daishinkan greets him with open arms and leads him to Zeno, who welcomes him to his palace. He explains that he's the mortal they haven't seen for eons, and that they need him to renew all of the Supreme Kai's so that their power matches Vegeta's racial status. So basically, Supreme Kai's are gonna become Saiyans with one small sacrifice, making Vegeta a full-fledged god and letting him watch over all of the Supreme Kai's. The last god of the vine apparently died in a battle against Majin Buu, as Buu was way too powerful for him and he died, explaining why the previous Supreme Kai's were so weak. Vegeta figured that it's the only way to make the universe, so he accepts as long as he can still have his family and friends. Daishinkan says he could, but not now as they have to begin training for that switch. Vegeta got excited by just hearing training, so he accepts. In that time, Frieza got revived on Namek, to which Namek got trashed, but not extinct, and Frieza then attempts to find the strongest person to combat the Saiyans, while he fights Frieza. So he goes and finds Perengus and Broly. He makes truce with them, and they begin training. Broly manages to beef up Frieza quite a bit, and Frieza is happy. Broly also got a massive power boost. With it, they go to Earth. Goku and Trunks are there and training, when they sense Frieza and one more massive power level. They go to investigate and they encounter Frieza and Broly. 
They figure they're up to no good, so they begin fighting. And at first, a simple Super Saiyan God is good enough to keep them both in check, as Goku battles Broly and Trunks battles Frieza. Goku is easily handling Broly, but Broly eventually catches up each time, so Goku is forced to go a step further each time, eventually reaching Ultra Instinct and lets Broly fight himself. Broly is eventually stopped by Goku, telling him that fighting is not worth it for Frieza, but against him is necessary to keep the universe safe. Broly actually listens to Goku and stops fighting, while Goku is explaining, while Paragus shouts at Broly to attack. Frieza shoots Paragus down in front of Broly, and Broly gets extremely mad, turning Super Saiyan for the first time and going mad at Frieza, surpassing him greatly. Goku is impressed by Broly, but also scared as he doesn't want Broly to destroy shit everywhere he goes. So once Frieza gets a massive beating, Goku tells Trunks to dispose of Frieza as he gets Broly to calm down. For once it actually works and Broly is soon to be joined to the Z Fighters and Frieza is destroyed once again. Back to Vegeta, him and I Shinkan are training pretty hard and Vegeta is getting the hang of his new form that he achieved during the Tournament of Power. Vegeta still has to train pretty hard, so I'll cover only him and give snippets of the original sagas. Moral Saga is basically the same, just that Trunks replaces Vegeta and Broly is aiding here and there with the Z Fighters. Vegeta is accessing all his power and learning to use all his new abilities, like creating things out of thin air, mastery of healing amongst other things. Vegeta is also training physically to be able to handle the power he's generating. He's also trying to surpass Daishinkan while at it, but he's a long way from that. Not too long, but it's not as close as you might think as full power unlock will come once Vegeta sacrifices himself as the official God of Divine. Vegeta, however, senses that Moro has fused with 7-3 and that Goku needs a bit of help. So he helps out a bit by healing him from very far to test his new power, while he's relaxing in between training. Goku notices his power gain, thinking that may just be Vegeta, powering up as far as he can get and battling Moro again. Vegeta continues on with control of his power, getting to the point where he's almost ready but is training to surpass Daishinkan just for fun. Once Vegeta is done with training, Daishinkan takes him to the core tree, where all the Kais are born and tells Vegeta to enter the tree and grab the two tree stumps on the sides and to push all his power in them while in his God of Divine state. Shin was also there to witness himself turn into a Saiyan, or well, a new core being. Vegeta does as he was told and both Shin, the tree and Vegeta began a transformation. Vegeta started feeling natural with the form and started feeling extremely hot. Shin started to morph and the tree started growing small appendages and black hair on its fruits. Vegeta and Shin then began shrieking painfully as the two amongst all the other Kais, Grand Kais and Supreme Kais and above began transforming, growing tails and with their hair turning black. Once it was complete, Vegeta exits with white long hair and pink skin. Daishinkan smirks as he is proud that they finally got someone worthy to take place of the last God of Divine. Meanwhile, as Trunks had been trained Ultra Ego and went to battle Granola, they all sensed a massive power level rushing towards him. Even Vegeta and Daishinkan, who aren't there, managed to sense it. All of a sudden, a red aura arrives out of nowhere and it is a silhouette of Vegeta's commonly associated clothes and hair. But when the smoke clears and the heat starts cooling down, out comes a completely red Vegeta who is in an obvious rush and with no eyebrows as well as a beard. Trunks, where's Vegeta? Vegeta, uh, he is... Before Trunks even finished the sentence, Granola was pretty much one shot by Michael in his imperfect Master of All Instincts evolution full power state. He then says, now that Granola is out of your way, can you tell me? He's training with Daishinkan. I think he's at Daishinkan's as we speak. Okay then, wanna come with me then? Keep me company while we travel? Uh, sure. 
Michael then goes back to base and they travel through space using Michael's hyperspeed while Trunks is in his Super Saiyan God. Uh, uh, so what's your name? How do you know my dad? I'm Michael. I'm the creator of this timeline, in a way. I'm here to pick up your father because I have a tournament of Vegeta's coming up once I reach 10,000 subscribers on a platform called YouTube. So make sure you're subscribed, everyone, because only 50% of you are subbed and we'd be at 5k already if you were subbed. Like the video too. Um, okay, is... so it's something interesting, right? <laughs> it is. Very interesting. Every Vegeta I've created will participate and the winner gets to be the king of all Saiyans. An actual king. Sounds pretty neat, right? <laughs> no way. So if my dad, uh, or, well, this Vegeta wins, I get to be the prince? Indeed. <laughs> you remind me of my son. Same name, same shit, just different package. Well, at least that's the same in your timeline. The two arrived at Zeno's palace and Michael asked for Vegeta and Daishinkan. Zeno's guards came over to fend Michael and Trunks away, but Michael simply dodged them with extreme ease. Zen replies how the two are at the core dimension, during the God of Divine ritual. Speak of the devil, the two have arrived, and they were wondering who was this insanely powerful person. Vegeta looks on to see Michael, as he approaches Michael. On another Vegeta I see. Ah, uh, rushed here. And my name is actually Michael. I'm the king of all Saiyans. And your creator. I'd like to test you against all the Vegetas I've created, just like you, in a tournament of Vegetas. Are you in? Or are you out? Pretty neat. But I got my own shit to take care of here. You're all set now. At this point, you just cannot die by external sources. Makes sense. So when is this so-called tournament? The tournament takes place the second the achievement is completed. As of now, you can chill. You in? Hell yeah, I'm in. I'm looking forward to it. Good. Congratulations, by the way, on your achievement. You're now the strongest being here, below me. I'm looking forward to it too. I'll see you on the horizon of the tournament. Trunks can get you filled in on the whole thing. I have to go see my wife Urza and my best friend back home. Peace out. With that, Michael opens a weird portal and goes through it while Vegeta is gonna get settled on Earth and wait, as well as be with his family and pretty much everyone else. And with that, we're done with this what if. Thank you for watching. If you think this series was bad, then click dislike, but if you liked the video, hit that like button. If you'd like me to cover your idea in the near future, comment down below. And as always, peace out.